with a watch. I've, I've always loved coming to Tasmania. And I've always thought that uh, Tasmanians were great people. Ever since they sent uh, Royce Hart and the steward across the yeah, yeah, yeah. coast. <coughs> and uh, it's customary, as you know, to acknowledge traditional owners. Uh, uh, I recently gave a speech at Windy Hill, the home of the Essendon Football Club, and I said I want to acknowledge the uh, traditional owners of this ground. Uh, Timmy Watson, Terry Denner. <laughs> <laughs> People that have made it so great. So I, I think I should acknowledge the traditional uh, exports of Tasmania that have uh, come across the Tasman. I do want to say, I genuinely believe this too. Tasmania should have its own AFL team. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a great team, and uh, it would mean you could get rid of all the Chris, I am. Uh, when I first became treasurer, probably the meeting that I least looked forward to in Canberra was what we used to call the Premier's Conference. And at the Premier's Conference, all of the state premiers would come to Canberra and they would demand their annual assistance grants. And the Commonwealth would uh, dish out the assistance grants and there would be a lot of bleating and complaining and every Premier would go home and say, I've been done by the Commonwealth and uh, anything that goes wrong in my country from now on is all the fault of Costello or whatever or whoever it is that's in government again. Yeah. And because of that, uh, I uh, hit upon this idea that what we should do is we should introduce a GST. We will distribute that between the premiers. It will be carved up by an independent commission and the Prime Minister of the Treasury will have no responsibility for this funding ever again. <laughs> and this will lead to the end of complaints from the state governments uh, as to how they're being financed. You get what the GST collects, every last senator, no less, no more, is divvied up by an independent grants commission. What could be fairer than that? But well, what I didn't realise is that the premiers just used a love campaign. <laughs> they were not going to give up their right to come to Canberra and complain. And so we used to go through the charade of the premiers' conference every year, even though there was no grant to be given. It was all decided by the independent formula. They would still insist on coming, they would still insist on making their speech, they would still insist on complaining, they would still insist on blaming the federal government for their problems. And I'll never forget uh, one day uh, my colleague was the Treasurer of New South Wales. When it came time for him to talk, he said, before I begin my speech, you might want to have a toilet break and get a cup of coffee. And I said, why is that, Michael? He said, I've instructed my public service to write me a speech, and they said to me, what should it be about, Treasurer? And he said, I don't care as long as it goes for an hour and a quarter. <laughs> and he sat there and began reading a speech which went for an hour and a quarter on vertical fiscal imbalance, the equalisation formula, the Commonwealth Grants Commission, and most of all, how New South Wales have been done again and again. <coughs> And when he finished this exceptionally boring speech that had gone for an hour and a quarter, I looked up and I said, now I know how the Cubans feel when Fidel Castro the president <laughs> at the State of the Union address, because Fidel Castro would assemble the residents of a bar in Cuba and he would speak to them for five hours. And in, uh, in Cuba, uh, if Fidel Castro says you're coming down to listen to a five-hour speech, you come down, you laugh at his jokes and you clap politely when it's all over. And why was I thinking of the Mother Cuba and Fidel Castro in a five-hour speech? It's because when I opened the Fairfax newspapers on Saturday, there was a 6,000-word essay from Kevin Rudd on everything he was doing for the Australian economy. And I know a little bit about uh, economic policy. I've uh, brought down more budgets than any other person in Australian history, and I began to try and read. <laughs> and as I began to try and read this 6,000-word essay, I thought to myself, you know, Fidel Castro was not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was urgent, 
it was long, it was boring, and as far as I could tell, my point was nothing good had ever occurred in Australia until Kevin Rudd was elected. <laughs> and now that he's been elected, he will lead us into new sunlit upland like which we've never discussed before. I kind of got the gist up for the first two paragraphs. <laughs> but it occurred to me that Australians won't really believe that to be true. Uh, no more than they will believe Fidel Castro telling uh, Cubans how well they're doing. Uh, no more than they believe the speeches of King John Hill in North Korea about the socialist paradise they live in. Um, Australians know that since the change of government, things haven't been going so well. If I had said to you, in November of 2007, before the federal election, well, don't vote for the Labor Party. They'll drive the budget into deficit. They'll run up all of the debt that we've just paid back. The economy could well go into recession. You'd have said I was scared in fact, I did say that before the election. And the press did say I was scared of that. I said that we were facing a big financial crisis. I said that there could be a recession. Uh, and the editor of the West Australian newspaper wrote an editorial saying it was irresponsible for a senior economic official to talk in this way. He said, what next? The Swan River will turn to blood and people will get boils on their skin. I won't uh, go uh, into all of the details of those warnings I gave before the election because um, in a week's time the paperback edition of my book is coming out. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be able to read that in the new upcoming <laughs> chapter uh, of the paperback uh, edition. And I don't know whether I mentioned to you that uh, the hardback edition has sold out, uh, but you will be able to get the paperback edition which documents all of this before and after the November 2007 election. Seems to me that what we were promised and what we've got have been two very different things. Uh, Kevin Rudd said he was an economic conservative, and yet he's engaged in the greatest increase in spending since the Whitlam government. Kevin Rudd actually said he would cut tax if he were elected, and yet he's now talking about a 0.75% surcharge on our taxes to, spend, to, to fund dental care. Kevin Wright said he wouldn't touch superannuation, but in the last budget, 